welcome to another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast, the place experts share their wisdom on living well by mastering health, wealth, relationships, and spirit. Before we get started, I want to let you know that the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share this episode with your friends and family. Also, if you'd like to learn more about how to master life, check out our website at pursuinggreatnesspodcast.com. With that said, I hope you enjoy the episode. We have a very special guest with us today. So grab your pen and paper and enjoy the journey. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast. Today we have with us Jose Lugo. Jose is the co-founder of We Are All One Story. He joined a street LA street gang when he was 16 and would be convicted and sentenced to five years in prison at the age of 18. When he paroled from prison, he vowed to himself that he would never go back and dreamed of one day telling the stories of his peers. He currently travels the country listening to and sharing people's stories through We Are All One Story and is currently finishing his memoir, Love, Faith, and Violence, a true song and story set to release April 2021, which is this month. Look at that. So Jose, yeah. I'm super excited to have you on the show today. So thank you for hopping on. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, for all the listeners, everybody who's here uh, watching, listening today, um, Jose, you know, we're all, this is COVID time. So we're all in places that we're not normally Jose's uh, from, from his basement or his, uh, his living room, I believe, <laughs> which doesn't have the best reception. If he starts to cut out a little bit, we're just going to give him a little patience, give him a little, little time to hop back in. Um, so that's the the caveat there. But Jose, we always start with stories. I love it that your your business is called We Are All One Story. So why don't you take us to your story? How did you get started down the path that you're on right now? Yeah, um, you know, I got a, a story that starts from my childhood, but how we, you know, started We Are All One Story and really getting involved with not just our own personal stories, but the stories of others um, was... I pretty much hit um, a low point in my life. You know, I hit a, a deep depression. Um, I didn't know how I, to identify that depression because I never really had heard of mental health or mental health issues. So, and it wasn't also like, okay, for me to talk about how I felt to anyone and stuff like that. So I was just going through this, this real bad time. And the lowest point of it was me thinking that my life didn't matter and that my my story didn't matter. And, you know, when you're that deep in a depression, I mean, it's tough to get out of it, especially on your own. And, you know, for me, I didn't know what to do. And, and going through a day to day um, routine of asking yourself is today the day that I'm going to end my life? Am I finally going to do it? And, you know, it's not that I wanted to kill myself. It's just that I, I didn't know if life was going to continue to be that painful. I knew that I couldn't keep on doing that same thing every day. Like it was too much for me. And it was something that the more I try to attack with brute force or, or tough talk or anything, it's like the more beaten down I got and I just couldn't do it anymore. So for me, um, you know, pretty much on the 11th hour, you know, I cried out to God and, you know, I had a spiritual moment and, and in that moment, I did feel a glimmer of hope that things could change. And, and I did have a remembrance that, you know, my story matters because my life matters, that I don't need to give anyone a reason for my value. I don't need to, I don't need any validation for me to be here on this earth. I'm here and that's enough. So, from that point is where I started, you know, going back into my own story. I started writing my memoir. I guess started going back into my own story. And then um, I also, like it was, you know, when you're back against the wall, you just don't come out of that deep depression. It was also something to keep me going as well, personally. And, um, you know, I told my brother the idea, like, hey, this is where I'm at you know, this is how I'm feeling. He looked at me and he said, you know, I kind of feel the same way. Like he was going through his own depression and I didn't even know about it. And um, I then told him like, hey, this is what I want to do with We Are All One Story. Like we just go, anyone who wants to share their story, we'll get to them and we'll share their story. 
the only prerequisite is, is that they talk honestly. That's it, you know, that you just talk honestly. Any, nothing else matters, not what you do, not your accomplishments. You're the gold. And, um, you know, that's how we are all one story started. We feel that we don't just feel, we know that us as people are the most important thing on this world. And it's easy to lose sight of that. And one of the ways I remind people is like, you know, when the Twin Towers went down, did we talk about the price of the building or did we talk about the people in the building? When a jet crashes, do we talk about, oh man, we just lost a jumbo jet or do we talk about the souls on the plane? And it's just so easy to forget that we are the most valuable thing on this earth and to really realize that and actualize that within your own person, I think that starts within your own story. Man, I, uh, I love that story. Um, and I, I 100% agree. I think uh, I like that you use the, the image of the Twin Towers, um, you know, their monetary value versus the actual souls that are in there, because that really does give color to, um, to the fact that it is humans. I mean, we are the thing that matters. So um, and it is really hard, especially when you're going through a mental health um, crisis or a mental health issue, uh, because there is so much stigma. And when you're in, you know, a, a dark place like that, you put more pressure on yourself, um, feeling that people are going to judge you uh, for coming, you know, for, for talking about it and talking about your story, talking about what you're going through. Um, and it was amazing. You, you were saying that, uh, you know, your brother didn't even, or you didn't know that your brother was going through something like that, you know, the closest person to you. Um, so, you know, when you're going through a, a mental health issue like that, a lot of times people outside of you don't see it. Um, so you do, you need to reach out and that, that type of um, that stigma and that shame that you put on, on yourself, you just got to get through it. So I love, I love that you shared that story. Um, I want to get a little bit more color onto the backstory of that. Um, you talked about the street gangs. Uh, so eight, at age of 18, you were sentenced to five years in prison. So how did it lead up to that, that moment of um, you know, the darkness where you just kind of couldn't see the light? You didn't know exactly where the next day was going to lead you. Um, what was the, the lead up to that? Yes. So, I mean, the lead up, it was the culmination of, of just so many things. I mean, it started with my childhood. It started with, um, you know, my parents got divorced when I was five after my dad left. Um, he was, you know, an absent father. Um, and my mom decided to be um, an extreme dis uh, disciplinarian. She was physically abusive with her discipline. And, um, you know, she's raising six kids on her own, but I remember the first time that, you know, my mom hit me and this isn't just like a regular type hitting. Um, I remember just feeling hurt, betrayed, not understanding. Um, and from that moment, you know, I began to rationalize and um, justify wrong acts because the person I love was doing them to me. Right. And so that would that would spill over into my uh you know teenage years so i grew up you know in the house i would walk on eggshells pretty much every day um i didn't know like i like i i was on flight or what the flight or fight response constantly right, yeah. you know yeah and um you know when i got into high school um i gravitated towards the gang members you know, it's like we had a similar bond. We had a similar background. We were poor. Most of us didn't have our dads with us. And a lot of us hated being home. So instead we stuck to, yeah, like it's just friendship, except since we've already kind of, we've all already gotten used to rationalizing bad actions and making them seem okay. Even though deep down we know they're not, it's like our conscience was a little bit seared and you know, the violence that I experienced at home when I joined the gang, now I was, it was empowering because I was able to inflict that pain on somebody else and not be the victim and completely think that it was okay. And, you know, so that's how, and, you know, it, it was, it was, when I was in it, I didn't know what was happening. Looking back, I can see that it's a trap and I'm fortunate to have gotten out of that because I have a lot of homies who are still in that arena. But, um, you know, it was just wrong. 
and it's hard to say that it's hard to say that a, a bulk of majority of your life was wrong and but it was you know I found ways to justify so many bad things so by the time I was 18 years old you know I went on a, a robbery spree on a crime spree we robbed multiple um Hollywood videos at Albertsons uh you know, and it was, um, nobody got hurt in those, in those crimes, but people definitely got traumatized. You know, people definitely, um, you know, were hurt emotionally through, through those events. And, and I never felt guilty for the actual robbery. I always felt guilty for the people who were, you know, held up, but I never admitted that, like, it was wrong from the beginning. You know, I had never had that remorse for the actual crime itself. I had the remorse for the innocent people hurt, but I didn't have any for doing the crime because I thought in my mind, I'd been hurt so I can hurt other people. Um, and then when we're going to the robberies, um, you know, I justified it by, you know, pretty much just thinking that the government takes my money. Why can't I take their money? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such a twisted way of thinking, but that's literally how I thought. So I, I did, I did those crimes and I didn't feel too bad about it except for the innocent people. And that always weighed on my heart. And, um, you know, I ended up getting a five-year sentence. I did my time in prison. It was more of the same. It was violence every day. It was all ego and pride. Um, and in prison, I didn't really make a decision to change my life because I was so enthralled in the, in the lifestyle. And I also liked what it gave me, which was, it gave me a safety net for people to see this image than to see the little boy inside who's been hurt since I was a kid, just never was able to talk about literally just telling someone like, Hey, this really hurt me. So instead I'd rather, I'd rather you see. I'd rather you be afraid of me than you love me, you know? Um, but in prison, I did, you know, I did, I did forgive my mom because I did hear other people's stories in prison and I did gain perspective. You know, I had a lot of homies who told me, you know, they never knew their mom. Oh, their dad wasn't there and their mom wasn't there. You know, I had homies who have been in jail since they're 13 years old doing life in prison. They don't know anything else except, except being institutionalized. And, and that opened my eyes and, and to let me know that my mom did the best she could in her sphere. Like my mom's part, part of her own issues. And I'm sure she got better from how her parents treated her. Cause from my understanding, you know, she was beat all the time in Mexico. She immigrated from Mexico and you know, it's a cycle and it's on us to end it. But, you know, I certainly just, just gained more compassion for her and I definitely forgave her. And that gave room in my heart for me to then go on a journey of forgiveness. I forgave my dad for not being there, but the hardest part was forgiving myself. But I couldn't forgive myself until I really opened up that space and forgave my mom and my dad first because I blamed them for everything. And um, now there was only one person left to blame and it was me and that's a tough realization that man all the problems I've had in my life to really take ownership for it that the decisions that I made as a kid I know people give me excuses all the time like oh you were a kid you did you did these robberies I said I mean somewhere deep down I made a decision at some point in my life saying that doing these bad things were okay and I had to take ownership of that and that's a hard thing to do and that's that happened during the depression during the crumbling down of my pride and my ego and and really just being weighed down as to where I had to face those issues and I had to look in the mirror and I had to admit that it was my fault that I made these decisions and you know where do I go from there you have to start over and you know that's what we're doing. I love it, man. I love it. I mean, this is, it's a really impactful story. And um, I mean, you can never obviously accept bad behavior, like, you know, robbing a bank, but I really, I'm, I'm of the, the mind that it is impossible to judge people because you don't know their backstory. You don't know something like, 
you who had a mom um, who herself was probably abused when she was growing up. Um, and so it's just, it's something what, you know, as a kid, you probably didn't really have many options. You didn't have a dad there to, to show you boundaries um, and show you how to step up uh, without using violence or anything like that. And so it's impossible to judge a person um, regardless of the, their past mistakes. Um, and it's just to throw a little levity on the conversation. I know this is, this is a, this is a very serious topic, but it's interesting that you guys chose a Hollywood video to rob is I really do not see a Hollywood video as having any cash. <laughs> oh yeah, man. They, I'm old. Yeah. I'm 33 years old. Yeah. They, those are relics. <laughs> those are relics. Um, it was just, uh, we were kids. I mean, we're just, we're all, we were also dumb kids who didn't know any better. Um, Hollywood video. You're right. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like let's get some money and get some DVDs. <laughs> you know I mean? We were still kids and, and I think the Hollywood video, I mean, this is how dumb it is that maybe we got maybe at most in one Hollywood video, $3,000 and you end up doing five, 10 years, you know? Um, and it's, you know, it's just when you're in it, you have no clue. Like you can't, I couldn't process the risk reward or the, or like, Hey, if I do this, is it worth it? And I just, honestly, I didn't care. I felt like, you know, when I was that young, I was pretty much hopeless. I had no, no vision and surely no path for my life. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, I mean, there's so much to unpack from your story that you just said. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this is a smaller um, format. And so we're, we're coming into to the 20 minute mark. I'd love to go deeper. Um, yeah. But I want to just get out from you. What is the main message that you want to get across to um, anybody listening, listening to this episode? Yeah, it's just real simple that your story matters because your life matters. We all kind of know that we have inherent value. You got to apply that same value to your own story and start looking at it as such. Perfect. I love it. Um, and before we go on to the quick question round, tell us a little bit about uh, about We Are All One Story and your memoir. What is the next uh, the next steps for that? And where can people go to get your book? Yeah, awesome. So um, we are all one story. Pretty much we just go around and we listen to people's stories and, um, you know, we, we, we value their stories and we showcase them on our social media channels and we just try and get people to see their inherent value as people and thus the value in their own story. Um, as far as the book, it'll, no, we just have a YouTube channel at We Are All One Story, Instagram at We Are All One Story, and then we have the small clips on TikTok as well at We Are All One Story. Okay. Um, um, our memoir, my memoir will be out on the 25th. You'll be able to get it on our website at weareallonestory.net. All right. Perfect. Okay. So it's time for me to push us into the quick question round. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, I always start with books. I'm a big bookie, so I like book recommendations, but if you have a podcast, a YouTube channel, a movie, anything, um, what is one recommendation you would give to someone um, for general life wisdom? General life wisdom? Oh, man. I read the book of Proverbs. <laughs> I read the book I of it. Proverbs. I love it. That's great. Uh, moving on. Um, we all have super strength. We all have Superman strengths. Um, everybody has strengths, weaknesses. You are, you know, you are the same. So this is an opportunity for you to brag a little bit, um, you know, pump up that ego just a little bit. What are you super great at? What is your uh, superhero strength? I think um, building relationships, um, connecting with people and seeing people, you know, as the goal that they are. I think that's my, my superpower. Perfect. I love it. Uh, moving on, and this is for habits. Um, so habits are the foundation of our life. It gives us something to springboard from. Um, if you could point to one habit that you do on a consistent basis in your life that contributes the most to your overall health, well-being, and happiness, what would that habit be? Morning prayer and meditation, first thing. Perfect. I love it. Um, and this one, this is, <laughs> this can be a hard one to do quickly, but if you could go back to the younger you, so the younger Jose, um, <laughs> who had not gotten involved in gangs yet, um, you know, is still just going to school, yeah. go back to him and give him one piece of advice moving forward. Um, 
for him to know, I, I really wouldn't want him to know anything. I would want him to feel that he's loved and really believe it and know that it's okay to be himself. I love it. I love it. All right. And this is the last question. Um, this one is for the listeners and the watchers. You have given us a great story to listen to, and I'm sure people want to reach out here a little bit more about what you guys are doing. Um, you've already mentioned your website. So what is the best place for them to, for people to reach out to you? Yeah, I guess on our, our, on our Instagram channel, I mean, you can follow us and then you can DM us. We, we we're pretty diligent on responding to our DMs and stuff like that. So you can reach us directly fastest that way. Perfect. All right. Well, Jose, thank you very much for hopping on the show today. It was a pleasure to hear your story and to talk with you. Awesome. All right. For everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason that we do this. So we appreciate having you here. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to us, pursuinggreatnesspodcast.com. Um, the website is still in development, but uh, there is a form there. So you can click through and drop, drop us a question. Um, if you want to reach out to Jose, I'll put all of his links in the show notes. So click the little more in the description. It'll pop down that full description and in there you can find Jose's link. Other than that, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. Keep rocking it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you guys for sticking with us on another episode of the Pursuing Greatness podcast. I hope you got a lot of value out of that guest. Um, again, the best way to support the show is just to subscribe, like, and share with your friends and family. Also, check out pursuinggreatnesspodcast.com if you want to get more information about what we do and what we offer. Um, I hope you guys have a great day and, uh, and keep living in integrity with yourselves. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode coming shortly.